Good morning. So I'm uh, having my morning routine, sipping my cup of coffee with my pinky finger facing upwards and reading. Uh, and I'm reading about Impressionism. It's still the same book that um, uh, my dear friend uh, Rita gave to me on my birthday. And uh, I'm struck by um, some information here uh, related to my artist career. So basically, I've been struggling for the past five years since I started to um, try to make a living just from painting, just from art. And um, I always uh, thought that um, it's my work that is not on point, otherwise I would live abandoned, uh, abundantly from my artwork. I'll sell like crazy and have lots of commissions. And um, I'm sometimes I have a lot of commissions, a lot of people interested in my work. And sometimes I have periods that it's less, uh, people are less interested. Although in the past two years, I've been getting quite regular and uh, the flow of work has been um, quite regular, except during pandemic, COVID-19. Anyways, talking about um, the mindset of an artist, I really struggle with that, with sometimes my work being appreciated uh, and I'm getting financial return from it, some other times not at all. And I was wondering, I always wonder how artists lived in La Belle Époque, in the late 1800s where they uh, got an art dealer and lived from it. And I'm reading this and the painters that made history, I'm talking about um, I'm talking about uh, Renoir, I'm talking about Pizarro, which were like the beginners of the Impressionism, like the guys that lived in Paris had the group uh, submitted to the, um, to the saloon every year. And I'm starting to find parallels with their life and mine, uh, pretentiousness apart. For example, the saloon, I'm like sending open calls every now and then. And uh, I, I question if it's a good use of my time. And, uh, and I realized that they tried the saloon. And the biggest painters of history got rejected loads of times. I'm not talking once or twice. They got loads, loads of rejections um, from the art saloon. Also, sorry, I'm closing my window because there is people starting to deliver stuff. And um, also I'm struck by Camille Pizarro, which is a guy that painted like uh, this, you know, it's like a very good painter. And they are saying here that um, a, a parts, I'm going to read, okay. So uh, he was like exploring light and color and all that, and he was a bit older than the others. And they said, apart from 1867, he was regularly accepted by the saloon, though he sold little as a result. So even being in the saloon, that was the most status thing that they all looked forward, like uh, winning a contest open call, um, he sold very little. And in... Uh, 1868, together with Guillaume, I know, uh, only uh, one unimportant dealer took interest in his work. In 1868, uh, together with Guillaume, he tried to make little money painting, a little money painting shop signs and doing other work similar of a kind. So it means that he was like, painting shop signs. We're talking about a mature artist on the top of a research field that changed art history forever. And it was like painting window shops. So I realized that I idealized totally what will take to become a great artist. And uh, 
it's a good good shake to read this because I'm realizing that yeah our perception of a romanticized artist life that everything's just gonna flow to us if our work is on point which probably could happen if if the work is is really strong and all that you see how I'm tangled on this loop and and reading about the greatest artists in history painting shop signs and selling very little yeah another one also that struck me it was about Pizarro Ah yeah, yeah, yeah. It was about Renoir. Renoir, it's like top top impressionist. And um, I'm gonna read this. Renoir aims were border in scope. Through his aesthetics, were less secure than Pizarro's, trying to carve out a place for himself in Paris art scene, and at the same time having to sell pictures to make a living. He was not always clear of his own mind about the direction he was moving in. This really struck me because we think about artists as these really confident people that uh, have like very strong, um, clear path defining their way and they know how they're going to portray this and they know how they, they, they're going to present that and they are very confident and not at all. Like even the greatest artists, they are struck by uh, lack of confidence by uh, dilemmas of trying to sell work and making work for selling and making work to explore like the visual noble ways of the arts and um, yeah I it just made me think that maybe it's not black and white maybe like the biggest artists because in this period they were impressionist they explored the visual impact of imagery in a different manner than the previous artists so maybe this exploratory f f aspect of their work uh, even gave them less confidence about what they were doing and they end up contributing a lot to art history and yeah that's the, the thought that came to my mind and it's kind of appeasing because made me realize that um, maybe when I feel lost, I'm not lost at all. And maybe even that feeling lost is not a bad feeling. It's, it's, it's a good thing to, um, to question ourselves. Well, I don't know if it's a good thing, but it's a normal thing, even amongst great artists. That's what made me kind of uh, released to know. This was my morning artistic rant. Have a good day. Bye-bye.